whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably wondering how I got here. Well, it began with the long journey. My name is Sharon Dorsey, and I'm a graduate student in the Virginia Tech Shorebird program. On this early April morning, my team and I were driving over 500 miles up the East Coast to Long Island, New York. We essentially mimicked the northward migration of the federally threatened piping plover that we were going to monitor. I pass the time on this multi-state drive by imagining what this field season will bring and anxious about embarking on this new project. As we're driving through New York City to get to our field station, I find a comforting familiarity in navigating traffic that reminds me of home. The only difference is that I'm currently pulling a half-ton beach vehicle behind me. I've grown up in an urban suburban area of Baltimore County, Maryland, where pavement and mowed lawns dominate the landscape. So what sparked my passion for conservation? I certainly wouldn't describe my family as super outdoorsy people, but an interest in the outdoors began to blossom in high school, with my track team running on the nearby forest trails for our warm-ups. My high school was predominantly black, so I had plenty of other students of color in my environmental science classes, which disillusioned me to thinking this was the norm. As I began my studies in college though, I noticed that the demographics of these courses lack the same diversity. Sooner or later, I acutely was aware that the diversity of the community I grew up with would not be carried in to my aspirational career path. My first impressions of the shores that my team and I will be working on for the next few months are that this beach is surprisingly packed with people, their pets, and their cars. Imagining how we will be working in this chaotic environment makes me wonder how the birds make their homes here. However, as we explore the areas less plagued by human presence, I find myself feeling more at ease and able to see the true beauty and offerings of the natural landscape. The plovers may have a nice home here, I think to myself. As we begin our first days of data collection, I see a piping plover for the first time. They have, like me, arrived here beginning their journey, unsure of what's ahead. Plovers are small, sand-colored, migratory shorebirds that were added to the United States Endangered Species List in the 1980s. Habitat loss and predation are the main cause of their decline across the country. Plovers are often looked at as indicator species, providing an assessment of shoreline health by their presence or absence on a beach. My team and I are here to monitor this beach's population and assist the land managers in tracking the life cycle of the pairs of plovers that nest here. This begins with observing their behavior and locating their nests. Ugh. Once nests were found, we'd wait for the best opportunity to trap the adults while they're sitting on their nest. Handling these birds for the first time gave me so much anxiety, but the trapping and banning of each bird supports conservation efforts to study their movement, survival, and overall behavior. Eventually, the eggs in these nests transform into chicks. We also trap and ban these little guys and monitor them until they can fly. By performing this field work, it means so much to me that I'm directly contributing to yeah. the recovery of this endangered species. Whee! And many aspects of this experience are new and exciting, but mostly just so different from my typical life around Baltimore. Some of the field season activities were not entirely new to me but the consistency in which I was doing them now helped normalize them. Riding in boats, driving ETVs, even just being in the coastal landscape became part of my routine. Being an observer and student of fieldwork responsibilities was one thing, but when I realized the weight and impacts of what had seemed like simple decisions had on the success of my field days, I began to question my ability to really be a leader in this field. How would I know whether it's safe enough to capture that bird? What would I do if our vehicle broke down? What if someone I'm in charge of makes a mistake? What if I make a mistake? I knew that mishaps and mistakes are inevitable in the field, but I began to take each one personally. When I struggled to band a bird in the required amount of time, when I got our UTV stuck in the sand, 
The worst was when I miscalculated the rise and fall of the tides and didn't dock the boat properly. My colleague and I waited three hours for the tide to rise again so that we could drive the boat back to the marina. These mistakes compounded, and I began to question my belonging in this field. This self-doubt, combined with the fact that black people were historically kept off these beaches, slowly tainted my mind. The only roadway onto this beach was designed by the park's namesake to prevent tall buses from transporting those from poorer communities, typically black and brown families, from visiting this beach. This was back in the 1920s. So almost 100 years later, for me to be on the same beach conducting research caused me to reflect on the experiences of my ancestors. Black people were forcibly separated from the pleasures of the outdoors for centuries. Society may have changed the laws, but the lingering effects are still felt by many in the black community. I now see myself playing an important role in reconnecting black folks with the outdoors. I make an effort to promote my fieldwork experiences to the public to increase representation of people of color working in natural sciences. With greater representation, black folks have more relatable role models and hopefully are inspired to pursue this career path too. The sense of responsibility to a greater cause empowered me to be more confident in myself and in my place in the conservation field. So anticlimactic. <laughs> After putting my previous anxieties aside, I was again reminded of the joys of field work. Having the privilege to see wildlife up close, contributing to data collection supporting their protection, and rolling with the still never-ending obstacles that came our way. It also became much more fun working with my crew members and experiencing each day as a new adventure. It's still a blur how I got there, but I eventually became the one in charge leading a crew in my second field season. Nice. Okay. What I've learned the most from this field experience has been perseverance. The feeling of accomplishment after completing a hard task is just unmatched. Don't get me wrong. Field work takes a physical, mental, and emotional toll, but growth in all its forms, developing new skills, breaking stereotypes, and becoming a leader is meant to be uncomfortable. My hope is that students interested in working in the outdoors, regardless of their background, feel that there is a place for them in conservation and that they can bring their full authentic selves to the field. I know that once I put myself out there, I received a flood of support from mentors and others that have kept me on this path. And now it's my turn to support others in changing the face of conservation. <laughs>